So one of today's jobs is going to be to swap the middle roller on the sliding door. Uh, the roller on the door at the moment is ground totally flat. I'm fortunate enough to have a spare at the moment because I bought a spare door for my previous van. Uh, it is an original one but the wheel spins totally freely and it's not ground down at all so it's still going to be good for repair. Uh, just to get rid of the one that's totally ground down. I'll show you that one as well but uh, to go through the procedure I'll run through it step by step just in case you need to replace one yourself as well. So I'll just show you how badly this one is on the runner and then we'll crack on. As you can see there that's the wheel and it's just not turning at all. It's just sliding along the runner. So it's definitely in need of repair. So to get the old roller off, first things first, if you've got any panels on the lower part of your door that needs to come off so I'm just going to get the drill out undo all of my screw points for the panel get that off and I'll show you what you need to do when the panel's away right so that's my side panel away from the door as you can see this is a fully insulated door it's completely jam-packed with Celotex insulation uh, there's a video on my channel on how I've covered all that so for the roller itself now there are two bolt holes just there, they are what will release the roller itself, the actual uh, attachment mechanism to the door. So when you start undoing those, if you've got another pair of hands, if anybody's around to help you, uh, they could be on the other side of the door ready to support it because as soon as you undo those two bolts, the door will want to drop. So just like when you're doing the bottom roller, which I've already done on this fan, uh, again there's another video of that on my channel as well, uh, you do need to support the door with either an axle stand, a jack, a wood, whatever you can, because as, uh, as soon as you undo those, it will drop and it will ruin your day if you haven't supported it already. So I'm going to go and get an axle stand myself, get the uh, uh, spanner, get ready to get those bolts undone, and then we'll get the hinge itself off. Right, so that's the door supported, so when I undo the bolts, and if the door does try to drop, that's already pretty much sitting on the axle stand itself, so that won't cause any damage to the door, and I'll be able to ease it down just the couple of millimetre that it's just spare at the moment, and uh, that'll be fine. So once the bolts are undone, the runner itself will then uh, be able to slide along there, and then there's just this end cap, that's just got a screw in the end, you need to take that out, and then that will then release the roller. So. Now the door is supported, I'll get back inside the van and start unscrewing the bolts. Right, I've just ever so slightly loosened the bolts there and that was just so that would allow enough movement for the door to sit on the stand and as you can see now that's sat nicely on the axle stand so there's not going to be any sudden drop or anything so now I can undo those completely and then it'll come away from the door. As you can see they're already finger loose but not enough to the point where it would have just let the door drop itself. Uh, now these two bolts are also used to adjust the alignment of the door so when this comes off and I put the new one on if the door's not sitting up 100% uh, with the seal around the outside or the uh, runners running along the panel work don't match up those can be adjusted to pull the door in and to raise it up or down slightly as well. So I'm going to get those two now fully unscrewed and then it'll be ready to come away. Right, that's the two supporting bolts out, so now all I need to do is go again now on the outside of the van, undo that end cap and that should then release the actual roller. Right, so that's the return and stop out, so now it should just be a case of wiggling free the roller and that should then slide along this roller and straight out. And there's the wheel free. Well, this was definitely in need of repair. It's only just starting to grind down on the bottom, as you can see there. But trying to turn it, and it's completely seized up. I just cannot twist that at all. So that is a completely seized up wheel. Do a little quick bash on the floor. Might loosen it. Nope, it's still not turning. So that is going straight in the bin. Right, so now it's just a case of reversing the process, sliding the wheel back into there, running it 
along in it through the hole in the door then going back in the door and securing the bolts again Right, so that's the bolts secured onto the replacement roller. Now in theory, that could be the job done, but if you look there, the bolts themselves aren't lined up with where the marks were from where they were previously on the door. Now that will be the true alignment of where the door was previously, so I'm gonna to have to manipulate the door a little bit just to try and get the bolts moved over and get them in the right position, because if I just try and shut the door now, although it's probably gonna roll nice and freely, it's not going to meet the alignment that the previous door was in. So this is where having somebody else to be on the outside of the door while you're on the inside, then tightening up when it's in the right position, that's where a second person really comes in handy when doing this job, just to try and get the alignment right. And uh, you really don't want to be just trying to slam the door shut straight away after replacing the roller, because I'd say if the alignment's out, you could very well be banging into the door locks or uh, creasing up against anywhere on the frame so always try and get the alignment right first before you even contemplate putting any force into closing the door you don't want to be doing any damage to any of the locks mechanisms or the frame itself so I'm going to get these lined up to where they were previously and in theory that should be right but e uh, even so the first couple of closes you still want to be taking it nice and easy just to be sure that it's in the right place Yeah, it looks like I got a bit lucky. I just managed to shake the door pretty much into where the bolts were. So, as you can see there, they look pretty much spot on with where they were previously. Also helps having a window that opens up just so I can get my arm out and give the door a shake there as well. But as I said, just to make life easier, it's always worth having a second pair of hands just to be on the outside of the door. Just to uh, make sure that, uh, that you can get the alignment right and the door's not going to be dropping down or anything daft like that. So now in theory, the door should be able to come away from the axle stand. And I'll be able to test the opening and closing, making sure it's fitting fine from the outside. And then I just need to put the panel back on the door, and there you go, that's the middle roller pretty much replaced. So I'm just going to pop out and uh, make sure it's aligning upright, get rid of the stand, and give it a test. Right, so it looks like that's gone in pretty much first time in, in the right place. It's still nice and straight. The lines going along still meet and match just as they did before. So as they're just trying to get those bolt holes exactly into the same place as they were previously really does make that difference. And there's no way after changing the middle roller you really want to be slamming any door shut. And so you just want to be taking it nice and easy just to be sure. And uh, <clears throat> once you're sure, then it's okay to open and close it. So as you can see now, Compared to what it was, I've got one finger. Look at that. No sliding door rolls that easily and freely. Look at that. That's a replacement bottom roller, a replacement middle roller, little finger. I'm quite pleased with that. So, there you go, that's how you close the middle roller. Sorry, that's how you change the middle roller of the VWT4. I say it's pretty much going to be the same sort of principle on any van though. So if you're watching this and you've got a different van, it's going to be roughly the same sort of uh, method. The only thing I've got left to do now is put the end stop on there. And that's just one screw that goes back into there. And that is the complete middle roller replaced on the sliding door. And I say I'm really pleased with that, just on how easy that's moving there. Considering I was always having to put pressure on the door to open and close it before, little finger time. That. So much better. So there you go, that's how I've changed my middle roller. And if you want to see how I've done the bottom roller, have a look at my channel. And there's a video covering that, as well as pretty much every conversion job that I've done on this uh, T4 so far. So. Feel free to have a look and I uh, hope you enjoyed the channel. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, feel free to like it, rate it, do all the usual YouTube stuff. And yeah, there you go.
close it up and job done. Right, so that's the roller complete. The door panel all back on together as well. And it's rolling and closing just like a dream. So if I just open it up here, just open it a little bit. And then with one little finger, just one little push, and it'll just freely roll from halfway along. And I can let go pretty much around about halfway along when I'm closing it with, again with just a little finger, and it'll close all the way. There you go, that's how I've replaced the roller.